Welcome back. It's the Plus Politics, and it's time to look at the second topic of the day. The former national chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, Professor Mahmoud Yakub, says the failure of politicians to fulfill campaign promises, amongst others, have contributed to the low turnout of voters during elections. He stated that Nigerian citizens no longer trust politicians and are tired of hearing the same promises during electioneering campaigns, so they stay at home during elections. He also mentioned violence or threat of violence as a reason. To discuss this further or the truth behind this statement is Mr. Festus Okoye, who is the National Commissioner and Chairman Information and Voter Education Committee of INE. Good evening, Mr. Festus Okoye. Yeah, good evening. Yeah, good to have you. Yes, um, whether he is your former boss or your current boss, I can as well guess <laughs> that you are going to be on the same page with him. But could you tell us more on the import of that position by the former chairman? Well, um, I, I, I think that um, um, he uh, just gave a few instances of uh, what leads to voter apathy uh, during, during election, elections. Uh, it, because of the questions he's, he was answering, uh, he was uh, specific, uh, but he didn't uh, elaborate more. Uh, I think that I agree completely with him uh, that the issue of uh, governance failure in certain instances um, and the issue of promises made by uh, politicians, especially when they are campaigning for elections and what happens after they get elected into power, also accounts for uh, the issue of uh, in, the, in, the, in the electoral process. You know, because if... Um, uh, you've been promised certain things. You've been promised uh, good roads. You've been promised good uh, drinking water. You've been promised hospital, and uh, you've been promised uh, the good life. And then at the end of the day, after elections, uh, four years uh, down the line, uh, there is no visible uh, improvement uh, in your life, and there is no sign whatsoever that what you've been promised uh, will come to fruition. The implication is for and then uh, uh, people have the tendency uh, to move away, um, uh, believing that uh, promises are just promises and that uh, some of them are not meant to be fulfilled. Uh, so the attraction to go to the polling units on election day uh, to go and vote once again uh, may not likely be there. So I think that it is in, within that particular context uh, that he made that particular statement. Okay, let me, let me look at uh, this way and... Uh... I totally, this is my opinion, and I'm, I'm, I'm not ashamed to say this, that INEC has done pretty well in terms of sensitization. INEC has done pretty well in terms of doing everything possible to make people come out to vote. But it can be very, very discouraging when we are talking about 35% turnout, talking about 40% turnout of the, from the voter register, not even people that should even register at all. So this becomes quite worrisome. And uh, saying that it is an issue of failed campaign promises, that issue is for the politicians. But what more? Don't you think INEC needs to change the strategy? Maybe not needing more funds now, but how do you convince people to show more interest? I think there are variegated um, issues uh, relating to the issue of uh, low voter turnout. One, our people have this tendency of not reporting deaths when they occur, uh, because the Independent National Electoral Commission uh, does what we call claims and objections, um, where the voters register for play, uh, for people to come and check whether there are names that are on the voters register that are not supposed to be there, whether there are names of persons who have passed on that are still there, uh, so that we can clean up the voters register. But when you display this uh, voters register, very few of our people turn up uh, to give that information. Uh, secondly, the, we have very poor record of births and deaths in this country, uh, because the commission is supposed to collect uh, a record of deaths 
uh, from, from, um, from other agencies uh, that keeps this particular record uh, for the purposes of, um, of updating the voters um, uh, 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 register. Uh, but you know, that also is a huge challenge. Then there's also the challenge of students who registered when they are still students and have moved on, they have graduated and refuse or neglect or for one reason or the other uh, are unable to move their, their previous register to their new location. This creates a huge location. And they also give to us the fact that, for instance, if you conduct elections today, there is a possibility that 70% of the uh, of the students who register will not be in a position to vote because they are not in the locations where they register. Uh, so some of these issues contribute to low voter turnout. And then you also know that in certain instances, uh, there's what I call weaponization of violence. Uh, people have now used vi violence as a means of voter suppression. And when people do is confident that they can go there and come out in uh, and come out in one piece, the tendency is for them to completely stay away, do what they call sit don't look, and then hoping and believing that one day the electoral environment will improve uh, so that they can go and cast their votes without any form of molestation. Okay, uh, Mr. Professor Zokoye, let me do you this favor. I will give you some feedback. Um, this is done randomly as a as a political reporter uh, over the years, sometimes we see a lot of young people showing no interest in some of the candidates that are vying for election. And a very good example is when you see the way they vote electronically in this Big Brother and some other reality shows, you see the excitement, you see so much enthusiasm in voting for people who has no direct impact on them. You know, that's the irony of it. The person who gets this money may not even send them a recharge card to say thank you for voting for me. But you see this kind of passion. So I give it to you that you need to look at what will attract them, not just you. I know the politicians also need to do that to convince them. I agree with you. So how do we marry these two factors? The factor of getting something exciting to the young people to be interested, and secondly, the issue of electronic voting, how easy will it be for these young people? Because I know that is in the kitty. Uh, I, I think that um, as, as, as Nigerians, uh, we must factor in the, the electoral process. Uh, most of our youths are now internet savvy. Uh, they can do wonders uh, on, on the internet. What they prefer is a situation where they can go sit in the comfort of their rooms, use their smartphones, use their laptops, use their iPads, and cast their votes uh, without the necessity of going to the polling units to go and queue for two, three, or four hours uh, before they can vote. Uh, so I think that we need to also factor that in by moving um, speedily uh, towards, one, the introduction of electronic voting machines, and two, the introduction of internet voting in our, in our electoral process. This will satisfy the curiosity and the yearnings of some of the youths who believe that we are moving slowly in the electoral process. But I think that um, these are gradual and graduated processes, and uh, for now, what we are trying to do is to make sure that we deepen the use of technology in the electoral process in order to attract our use into this process. But more fundamentally, we sit in the electoral process. The youth must begin to trust the political leaders. They must begin to trust the process. The process must begin to work for them. If the process works for them, they will defend the process. If the process works for them, they will engage the process. But if the process does not work for them, no matter the type of preaching you do, they will be completely uh, uh, disinterested. But I also agree with you that we must find ways, creative ways and means, and new innovations that we make so that they can take the de their destiny into their hands uh, because the future is now and the future is theirs. Okay, let me quickly take a, a, a bit of trip to United States uh, uh, last election. And, uh, you know, trust me, the young people also follow the election and they pick one or two lessons there. Now, we have close to more than 80% turnout. And for me, according to American history, that's the highest ever in their 200 years of uh, democracy. 
But what are the issues responsible? We had the issue of mailing votes this time around. We also had the issue of, um, um, of when, when you look at uh, the diaspora voting, that has always been there. Now, we also have, mm. for record, sir, we have people who stood on that queue for more than two hours before they voted. So there was also passion. What are some of these lessons so that, you know, your effort is also, I know how INEC feels when you have low turnout in elections. So how do, what are the lessons we can pick from the last election or generally US elections? Well, uh, you know, our voting processes and procedures must also mirror the state of infrastructure in, in Nigeria. You and me know that as of today, the post offices are more or less comatose, and that people hardly uh, maintain their postal boxes. People hardly even know where the post offices are. So the issue of mailing votes in Nigeria, for me, mm -hmm. as of today, is a no-no. Given that it's a state of our infrastructure, we're not even. It's, 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 in fact, it's a it's a it's a no-go area. Now, in terms of diaspora voting. You, if you look at the, our, our electoral framework, if you look at section 48 and 49 of the Electoral Act, it says that people have to vote where they have registered as voters. And as of today, the, the legal framework does not give room for diaspora voting. The, there's a bill before the national now relating to electoral reforms. I think that we need to go to the National Assembly and canvass for diaspora voting. But you know, sometimes when people talk about diaspora voting, they talk about only people in the US and people in the UK, uh, people in the Netherlands. But somebody who is in Chad and who is in Niger and who is in Cameroon is in diaspora. Uh, so, and there are so many of these people who are undocumented. Uh, so we must find creative ways and means of making sure that when we do diaspora voting, the whole issue is issue of trust. Do Nigerians trust the electoral process? Do they trust the electoral management body? Do they trust the politicians to do what is right? And do they trust the security agencies to police and police well? These are some of the challenges we need to factor in as we um, amend the electoral legal framework uh, to make uh, the voting uh, and the electoral process more inclusive and more consultative. Okay, let's come back to, again to uh, the statement credited to Mahmoud Yakub. And uh, th this is definitely not what INEC can do. INEC can only conduct the process. But in terms of failed promises, let's talk as stakeholders now. How do you encourage people to ask some genuine questions? This question also addresses people like us who are in the media to say that, how, don't just tell me what you would do. But how will you do these things? And you need to put timeline on these issues. So how do we make such questions available? Because some of those uh, sound bites we have on our station, we have heard politicians during campaigns saying that, uh, I will do this, I will do that, hold me by my word, stone me if I don't do this. Do you think, <laughs> uh, to what extent should voters take them serious? Well, I, I think that um, as uh, Nigerians, uh, we have to engage the process. As Nigerians, we have to read newspapers. There are some people who talk about what is going on in the polity. As Nigerians, we must follow the budget and the budget process uh, to know what has been provided and what has not been provided. We must try as much as possible uh, to know what our representatives in the National Assembly are doing. You know, because now, uh, in terms of people in the National Assembly, um, we must get back to the basics. They have no responsibility in providing borehole, in, provide, in, provide, in, in, in building covers, in building schools. That is not their core responsibility. Their core responsibility is making laws for the good governance of the nation. But because people judge politicians now on the basis of the number of roads built, the number of covers that have been cons uh, constructed, the number of keke um, uh, um, uh, that have been uh, bought, and so on and so forth, the people in the National Assembly now abandon their core mandate to go and provide this is because these are the things that the people are going to hold them accountable for uh, when they go for re-election. Uh, so what to come of the National Assembly? 
and the National Assembly must now find ways and means of holding the executive accountable. As I think these are some of the challenges we have, and these are some of the issues uh, we must take into consideration as we um, amend the electoral legal framework and as, as we move uh, towards the 2023 uh, general election. Okay, uh, before you go, probably this might be my last question. Uh, let's look at uh, the prospect of electronic voting, which I sincerely hope will increase these statistics going forward. Um, is INEC putting all, crossing all the T's, dotting all the I's ahead of the 2021 governorship election in uh, Anambra State? Am I right? Well, uh, our, the chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission or the former chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission and the incoming chairman of the commission uh, has uh, assured Nigerians that for the Anambra 2020, uh, 2021 elections, that the commission will deploy electronic voting machines for that particular election. Today, to this particular extent, we have invited over 40 companies uh, uh, that have come to display the type of solutions they have. So what we are doing now is analyzing all the solutions that have been provided to see which one is smart, which one is simple to use, which one takes into consideration our environment, which one can do both verification and, and authentication, and also leaves a paper, a paper trail uh, in the electoral process. So that's what we are looking at now. But whether we are committed uh, to the introduction of uh, for the Anambra 2021 governorship elections, we have made a commitment to Nigerians, and we are going to fulfill that particular uh, commitment. So to answer your question, yes, we are crossing the T's and dotting the I's, and we are ready and committed uh, to the process. There is no alternative uh, to the deepening of the use of technology in the electoral process, and it is one of the things we are going to uh, flag in 2021. And we are going to update the voters register and also do continuous voters registration so that we can give our people a sense of belonging. Okay. Uh, and then the process so that their votes will, in truth and in fact, count. Thank you so much, Mr. Fessor Sokoye. I'm tempted to ask more questions, but my time is up. I would have been able to also take you up on what more will you tell the young population who seems quite uh, apathy to the process. But trust me, put them in plan. Let's look at, you know, voting wherever you are, put it on the table. It's not fair for someone to have registered in school just because the school is shut down, the person is not allowed to vote. These are some of the suggestions that have come from the young population, which our station usually takes in high priority. So put it into context and see how they can get into the fray on the process. Thank you once again, Mr. Fester Zokoye. We will definitely do that. Yes, I will take a breather, and when we return, I'll be giving you my take, especially on the first discussion. Please don't go anywhere. Here is my take. The statistics ruled out by the commission is not only sad, it is indeed the reflection of hugely apathy population who feel their votes do not count. It is even sadder that even when they manage and struggle to vote, their choices end up disappointing them, as alluded by the former INEC boss. What do we need to do? What measure do we need to adopt, like the last American presidential election, where 80 to 90 percent turnout was recorded? The factors are not exactly different, because while there is protest votes against Trump, there are loyalty votes in its support. Should we also remind our politicians that President Donald Trump almost fulfilled, if not all, his campaign promises? For his supporters, the reasons, whether good or bad, it depends on who is assessing his performances. And some of them, most of these promises are religiously fulfilled. One more suggestion for the armchair critics, it is time to jump into the fray to vote and be voted for. And that's my take on tonight's discussion. Plus Politics returns same time on Monday for another fresh set of topics. I remain yours truly, Coyote Ladenge, saying bye for now.